Uh, welcome everybody to the April 9th meeting of the Wareham School Committee, our first ever uh, Zoom meeting. Um, I'm just stepped outside at my home at the moment just so you get the flag in the background. And if you don't mind uh, just doing the Pledge of Allegiance, that'd be great. And I'll begin. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so just bear with me while I walk back in. Welcome everyone. Um, so today, today's today's meeting obviously is online. We're doing this remotely um, per the new rules that the, that the governor um, implemented. Just need to let you know that obviously we're being recorded um, on this meeting. Uh, is is anyone? I guess it doesn't really matter, but is anyone else recording this as well? I don't think so. No. Uh, yeah. It is being it is being streamed live right now on WCTV, WCTV like it normally would. Just get some notes here just to let you know. Um, so because it's remote, we'll be doing all roll call all roll call votes tonight. Um, if if you want to you know if you want to speak, just like raise your hand so I can see it, and so I'll, I'll just like you know jot you down so I'll get to you when I get to you. Uh, I do have a dog; he might bark. I'll try to. Mine might it. also. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll have to mute, but that's tough when you're the chair. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, so if I do drop off, uh, April is vice chair, and it's all yours. <laughs> oh, <thank laughs> if, I, you. if I somehow drop off. So <laughs> so with that, um, I think that did I cover everything? You, you, um, I would normally ask Michelle, but I don't see her. Mr. So, Flaherty. Yes. Um, Chloe said she's also recording audio. Oh, great. That's Mary great. McKenzie's on as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. Thank you for mentioning that. All right. So um, I guess I guess we'll do the we'll do the roll call just to make sure everybody's here. So so I'll start with myself, you know, Mike Flaherty here. Um, April Rossi here. Yep. Do we have Mary? Grace Bavyaki here. All right. Mary, you're muted. Sorry, having trouble getting to unmute. I'm here. All right. So, so, uh, and then we also have, you know, Dr. Shaver Hood, Dr. Schwam, Mr. Palladino, Ms. Cote, Ms. Chandler, um, Ms. Fay. Uh, did they say Dr. Schwam? Dr. Schwam, uh, Ms. Siemens. We have Ms. Roberge. Um, April, uh, so also we have that. also we have um, to discuss an agenda item later on the um, the union MO, MOA. We have uh, Miss Semple and Mr. Fitzgerald. I think I got everybody. Yeah, Miss uh, Fundulus, Jane Fundulus. Oh, Miss Fundulus, where is she? Yes, yes, Miss Fundulus. There you go, right in the middle. <laughs> so, um, so with that, uh, we're going to go to the uh, second agenda item, and that's a vote to suspend public participation at school committee meetings policy and the school committee standing rules of procedure policy, part two, uh, conduct of meeting number four. Um, and I appreciate um, Dr. Shaverhood for putting that on the agenda, and it was at the um, at the advice of uh, Massachusetts Association of School Committees. Basically, there's there's no we can't do public participation at, at this time with this current setup. Um, and I guess I'll take a vote uh, of the committee to, to, to do that. So um, do I have a motion to suspend those rules? So moved. Uh, Second. That, so that was April with the, that made the motion and uh, Mary that seconded? Yes, seconded. Okay, so now uh, roll call, I guess I'll, I'll call it out. So um, April? Yes. Mary? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Myself, yes. Uh, unanimous for zero zero. Um, we're on to the report of the student rep already. No, no, <laughs> minutes of the meeting. 
uh, March 12th, 2020. Do I have a motion to accept? So moved. That was April. Second it. Second by Mary. Uh, any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. Um, I'll take a motion to accept. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do the roll call to um, to accept. So, so I go uh, April. Yes. Mary. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Myself. Yes. I don't. Uh, there you are, Joyce. All right. All right. And um, now, now we're on to the report of the student rep. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hey. All right, so I just wanted to share that um, all of my teachers are constantly reaching out to our students to make it known that they are available if they need help with anything, um, given how much this affects our learning experience. So we're all very thankful for that. Um, it is clear that the faculty are putting even more hours into the work than they did while we could actually attend school. Um, um, all of this type of learning is pretty foreign to most students, and many of us are trying to make the best of our situation as we are supported by our teachers. Um, my junior class actually had a meeting with our advider, advisors and guidance counselors to discuss college and how applications and visits are affected by the virus. Um, we were given multiple resources that may help us and we were also, we were as well as, um, informed as we would be if it were presented in our auditorium. Um, it was also recorded for those who are not able to make it to the meeting. So on behalf of my classmates, I'd like to thank all of those involved in supporting the students of Wareham. Um, it's, Situations obviously very like we've never really seen it before, and yeah, the students are really thankful for what everyone's doing. So thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have questions for Ms. Roberge? Well, thank you as always. I always I always look forward to your report. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, we're on to the uh, vote on Student Opportunity Act plan. Is that Dr. Schwann? Dr. Schwann. Um, I think you're, we've gone over the plan um, at length. You've had it for quite a while. I didn't hear back from anyone. So I assume that the plan that was presented to you is good as is, and we just need to decide whether you are all good with that. And if you have any yeah. questions, I'm happy to answer those questions. Yeah, it was straightforward, and it, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm a big fan of what, what you're trying to do with that to keep the Paris. So, um, I guess, does anyone else have any questions or comments for Dr. Schwamm? Nope. All right, seeing none, uh, to have a motion to uh, approve. So, so moved. Oh, April got me. <laughs> so, so, second? Second. Right, so, April. Uh, and then uh, Mary seconded. Um, so any further discussion? Seeing none, so a My, roll call. Yes. Um, I'm just checking that you are, um, there are some comments coming through the chat regarding this. Just wasn't sure if, if you are reading those into the record or if those are not. I, I, I can't, I don't know, I just brought them up right now. And I don't know if there's anyone seeing it on my screen, but or you, I guess everybody can bring it up. But I'm not. I'm not paying attention to to that. I'm trying to speak and, and do all that. I guess. So, I guess does anyone? Let's see. The echo. It seems that. Sorry. It seems that there's a question. Deanna Semple has a question about the Student Opportunity Act. Um, with teachers. Uh, I'm, I'm, sure. All right. So Deanna, just just raise your hand. Uh, uh, go ahead. <laughs> No, it's, you have the floor um, or the screen. <laughs> I didn't know it was really a time to talk about the screen. It's already been um, presented. But so your, your, your audio, um, I'm sorry, your audio is really bad, Deanna. It was supposed to be a combination of uh, teachers and staff. Deanna, your audio is really is, is as yeah. bad as it So I'm going to try and read I, I know what the question is, if you'd like. Okay. It says, uh, if you look at the chat, Deanna, I think this was it. Was input from teachers, et cetera, sought for this plan? Teachers and public were supposed to be involved in the plan. 
right? Yeah. Can I, should, would you like me to answer the question? Yes. Okay. So the plan was uh, yeah. first submitted as a draft to the school committee, uh, just as a sort of an overview. From there, it went to all school councils uh, and to the principals. The principals then spoke to their staff. They were, supposed, they were supposed to share this with all of their staff at a faculty meeting, as well as talk to student council, I mean school council and high school students if they, were, if they thought that they could um, give some input onto the plan. I then waited for feedback from all of those different variables um, and then received that feedback, implemented that feedback, then gave it to the school committee to uh, March 12th, I believe it was handed out as a draft document for them to share with their constituents, which would be those that voted for them to be in the positions that they're in. And that was the plan to do that. They were then to give it to the public and any feedback that I would have received from then, I would have input that into the plan. And so that's where we were. And that's also noted in the plan, the process and how we went about doing it. Um, does that answer okay. your question? So I, I, don't, I don't know when that Um, Deanna, you need to dial in or April, how did you, how did you get it to work? I went on my phone instead of on my Chromebook. Okay. Um, do you want to just type in the chat, I guess, and I'll see what you're saying. Deanna said that's fine. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, so with that, do, do we have, a, you're looking for a motion to approve tonight, right? Uh, Dr. Schwamm? Yes, please. All right. Um, I'm just catching up with chat here. Hold on. So, anyway, uh, so, 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 all right. So, we're looking for a motion to approve. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, so, <laughs> so, I take it that was April and Mary? No, Joyce. Oh, Joyce. All right. So uh, April uh, mo uh, made the motion and Joyce seconded? Yes. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Yeah, I, I do question whether, you know, was it brought to the, the members, the union members? We shared it at staff meetings. The members are faculty. I don't, <laughs> I don't get what. How are the members not? I mean, they're part of faculty and principals shared it with their faculty. So, and the, the WEAs are all of those people. So I'm not really sure what the, I don't understand the question, to be honest. I don't, I'm just wondering whether or not the union was aware of it and if they um, had a discussion at their meetings or not, that's all. Well, you'll, the principals, I guess, will have to answer that question. But to me, when I ask the principals to discuss it with their school council and their faculty, the faculty are in fact the members. So to me, it's the same thing. But I don't, you know, I don't know, you know, if they, maybe they assume they're a separate society from the faculty. I don't know. Well, I mean, in a way, they're not separate, but they're, you know, as a group, they should be meeting about it. But they're, they were met in a group with the principals, all of the faculty. So I don't understand. I'm not sure I, I, it was shared with them, that opportunity to read it, talk about it, all of it. I'm not really sure, you know, if they didn't do that when they had the opportunity to do that, I'm not sure what to say about that. They, I'm sure if they wanna have another meeting in a separate time with this little group or this smaller portion of them that, that's fine if that's what they want, but they knew this was coming. It was in all legislation. It's been talked about now for two months. Um, I don't know what else to say. What's the, what's the deadline, Dr. Schwamm? There isn't one right now. Okay. Yeah, it's been uh, put on hold, basically. So could we table this if it's been on hold? Because it seems like Deanna is saying that she wasn't aware of this. And if, I'm curious now also, 
if she wasn't aware as the president of the WEA, if there are others that were not in, uh, made aware of it as well, just to have a clearer idea of who saw it definitely as opposed to speculation? Okay, let me ask the principals if they actually followed the guide to that. So um, Ms. Chandler, for example, where uh, Ms. Semple works, maybe Ms. Chandler can identify the times that she spoke to her faculty about the Student Opportunity Act. Uh, Bethany, are you, are you there? Hi, you yes. Sorry, I have to mute my household. So I shared it with my I faculty saw. council, which was requested, and I have to look back at my staff meetings that happen, whether it was in February or the beginning of it, when I shared it with faculty, but yes, and it was definitely talked about with faculty council, and I have uh, the emails to that. That's all. Mike, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, who just spoke? That was Joan. Um, that was Joan. My video is off, and it says the host stopped my video. Oh, there it is. Same with mine. Oh, I just sent you an email. Mine says the same. Yeah. The, the, the host, by the way, is Mr. Ruiz. All I right. sent him an email on our behalf. Thanks. <laughs> well, I'm going a, off and on. Yeah. Um, yeah. He just started it back up. We should be good. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> Do we have Deanna to answer to if she was at that meeting or not? Deanna. I, my, 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 All right. I, Deanna, we, we really can't hear you. You need to dial in or go on the iPhone or something. Yeah, well, I don't think you can hear me if somebody mm -hmm. else is trying to talk at the same I, time as well. If, if I could not make a suggestion. Now. Go ahead. If um, the committee would feel better if we step back and then we'll share it with, uh, we'll ask the principals to please share it again with the entire faculty uh, to make sure that that happens, um, then we can bring it back if that's your pleasure. Okay. I, I would like that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, there's no harm in doing that. I mean, it's, there's no timeline, really. Right. Yeah. So I guess uh, we'll take a motion to table and, well, hold on. So when is our next meeting? Was it, is it two weeks? Sure. Probably. Um, I don't have the date. I don't think it's two weeks. I think you're right, Joyce. Um, oh, because of the calendar. Yeah, we need to table it to a date certain is the thing. So I guess, I mean, having not having the calendar in front of us, I just would say uh, take a motion. Hold to on, I can, I can pull up the district calendar. Hold on. Well, I've got, I've got the um, school committee calendar in front of me. How about, is it May 7th? May 7th, okay. So I take a motion. I, Go ahead, is it May? I'm, well, I'm I have it as April 23rd, but isn't that the week of vacation? Yes. Really? So, uh, do you want to say May 7th just to be safe? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, take a motion to table um, this until May 8th. Is that what you said? 7th. May 7th. 7th, yes. Right, do you have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Second. Right. So, Joyce um, motioned and April 2nded. And I see Dr. Schwann with her hand up, so what's up? I just want to um, mention if the commissioner asks that it be before that time that you can be flexible in that discussion because we're really going by what the commissioner is asking us to do. Sure. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see, Deanna. Go ahead, Deanna. Yeah. Um, the original date, I think, was April 15th? First. No, 1st. First. Okay. <laughs> So, so we have a motion and a second for May 7th. Uh, uh, any further discussion? All, right, all those in favor? So, and actually, so Joyce? 
Uh, Joyce, yes or no? Yes. Sorry. Uh, Mary? Yes. April? Yes. Myself, yes. Passes 4 0 0. Um, on to um, vote to declare obsolete equipment. Yes, you have in your package, you had two pages uh, with obsolete equipment. One page were was two copiers, and that's at the high school. And then on the second page, you have several um, Chromebooks. These Chromebooks, if you deem will, parts will be taken, or we w if they are not able to have any parts salvaged from them, then we will uh, attempt to sell them. So I would ask that you please deem the information um, obsolete. Need a motion to deem the equipment obsolete. So moved. Second. Second it. So that was Joyce and then Mary. April. Uh, April and yeah, and myself. Yep. So it was April and then Mary. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Um, so any further discussion? No. All right. Uh, I'm going to do the roll call vote. Uh, Joyce. I, I, oh, you're, you're muted. <laughs> Joyce. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, Mary? Yes. April? Yes. And myself, yes. So it passes for zero, zero. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shaver Hood. Um, vote on memorandum of agreement with Wareham Education Association. Yes. Um, I appreciate Fitzgerald and Mrs. Simple being here tonight to answer any questions. We've been working on a memorandum of agreement um, for some time. We met, reviewed one in executive session. Since then, this has certainly been expanded. And so I would ask if anyone has any questions, um, we would be happy to answer them. Uh, so which which document are you discussing the the one from the district or the one from the union i we would be discussing the one from the union the one that i sent you today was the latest version mm -hmm. okay uh questions comments uh mr fitzgerald is asking for someone to turn his video on that's a that's, that'd be good uh mr ruiz could you do that Mine is still off too. Oh, Jane, yeah. Yeah, I'm still off too. I can't get on. St Steve, can you turn? Uh, okay, this is Brian. Up? Brian's and back. This one, do this as well. Yep, I'm back. Yes. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Brian. Did you have a question or a comment or something? Well, I, I wanted to be certain that I was clear of which document you were working with. Is this the one that was included online in the meeting packet? No. No. Okay, so I'm not, we've had many drafts of this agreement, so I'm not entirely certain which one you're discussing. So I, I hesitate to say anything until I know. Yeah, this is the one that Deanna had sent this today, um, back and forth, and made a few changes yesterday, and then she sent it. Um, it's actually much more detailed, I think. I agree. Could, could I ask, does it have reference to the, what's titled the Continuity for Learning Plan? Only in one small section. I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm kind of going blind. I don't really know what that section is. Um, is there a way someone can forward it to him? So I'm maybe you can see. Forward it. I'm Actually, going to forward it to you, Brian. Okay, thank but you. the continuity of learning is not a part of this agreement. The learning okay. plan is not a part of this agreement, okay? 
All right, that, that was, I know that that was something that was a, a question of concern um, for ma many of us um, to find a, an, an equitable and fair way to right. work with students, so. Totally get that. So could I ask a question, Mike? Sure. So while you're talking about that, Brian, that's a question that I have. So why wouldn't you include that um, as a reference in that document? Well, because, it, because the document has not, we have not signed off on that document. That was a document that was made without consulting of the association. And so uh, we are in the agreement, if, if you read it, it refers to a joint labor management committee. Mm -hmm. That's who's going to make that building base. So, well, hold on. Um, oh, so I see Dr. Schwann, but uh, but Joyce, you wanted to follow up. Um, no, that's okay because she probably wants to add to that. I'm guessing. All right, Dr. Schwann. Yeah, that uh, continuity for learning plan originally was um, exactly actively. Uh, agreed upon by all constituents right from the start. Um, that yeah, had no, many edits no, that no, were not no, came back no. in. Dr. So, Hold on, Dr. Schwamm has the screen. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Uh, Schwamm. Uh, the association was involved in that document, so I'm not, I'm, I'm very involved actually, highly involved in that document right from the beginning. So I'm not sure um, when all of a sudden they're saying they had nothing to do with that document when in fact they had everything to do with that document except for the latest that we added as a result of the school being closed longer that second half they're correct that was how we we spoke to them and this is what a result of that second half of that plan but that whole first part of that plan was all about everyone being involved all right now um deanna you may go yeah, um, and we don't have a problem with the first part that we were involved in. It is the the several pages of the second part that we don't agree with, and we did not have any part in in uh, in working on with you. We had a discussion, but we never talked about any of this. So, well, it was a the discussion led to the document. Then the document went back out for feedback, and there was no feedback given on the document. What was returned instead was a memorandum of of agreement suddenly so there was no just it was willingly after the discussion something was put together and sent back out for discussion and the same process that i was that was hopeful like we did with the first time didn't happen the second time there was a it was a different response so that wasn't the fault of us not wanting to work with you that was you deciding you didn't want to work with the document um, you wanted to do something else Nice. Um, Deanna, go ahead. Yeah. Um, well, the response of the learning plan section that you did, uh, Brian emailed and I emailed that we didn't agree with it. So I guess I'm confused as to how you're thinking that was that we didn't give any. There was no. There, there was no. There was no. There were a couple of things that were, I mean, there were a couple of suggestions that Brian gave that I put, I put in there. There were a couple of other suggestions that I did place in there. The rest were school-based decisions. And those were from, you know, the people at your schools had made those decisions and that needed further discussion. But I, there was nothing to discuss because it was just, a, it was like, uh, no. And that was the end of it. That was, you ended the conversation. You chose to end it. It wasn't our choice. That was your choice. We were going to have joint committees at the building back. Yeah. Um, so back to Joyce, do you, do you have anything else? Well, so now I guess I would ask, we have a draft of the continuity, continuity of learning plan. Do we have the second part that you're referring to, we do, okay. Um, so, so is this is something that you're obviously having an ongoing conversation about, but I think, 
certainly you can disagree with me, but I think that it's important enough that that needs to be agreed upon and included. Would you not agree with that? I think Brian wants to answer me, Mike. Um, okay, uh, Brian, if you, if you like, go for it. Thank you, Mr. Flaherty. Uh, yes, Ms. Becky, okay, I agree that there needs to be a plan going forward um, on the issues that that continuity of learning plan is trying to address. And both the administration and the association have presented their own ideas, the association being this would be building-based um, committees at each level, high, um, middle, high, and elementary. Uh, and that was the uh, that was the suggestion that we presented uh, several days ago now. Uh, where it seems to be that we are is, and I'm st I'm, people are still working through get getting me that draft, um, there seems to be um, a lack of agreement on suggestions that students should be graded on the work that they're doing. Um, the association approaching this from the idea that a lot of what the public schools are meant to provide to students um, is still being provided. Dr. Schwamm and Dr. Shaver would have done a lot to make that happen. Um, but to be at the point where we are comfortable grading students and deciding whether the students can be promoted or not, de facto based on what they're doing in this distance learning, is still something where the two sides haven't agreed. Uh, mm -hmm. I brought up the continuity of learning plan because it was, that's where it was placed. I agree with Dr. Schwamm for the first, I mean, the first two days that we were out, Dr. Schwamm and I, I don't know how many times we go back and forth and we had conversations working mm -hmm. through what is much, much of the continuity of learning plan. The addition of rubrics to the high school and the middle school to um, assess the work that students are doing in a way that will affect their promotion, their class rank, um, that was something that there has not been agreement on, no. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing uh, Ms. Morgan, go for it. And I think one of the main issues is that the state has not given us good guidance on this. So, I, so it's hard for districts to make a decision on what they're gonna do. I mean, the last guidance that I heard was it was, you know, giving um, students pass, fail, um, not grading. So that's, that's one of the, the issues that we're having right now. Okay, um, requesting permission to speak. Am I allowed to speak? So who's, who's that? It's Melissa. Who? Melissa Frey. All right, so actually I saw Dr. Shaverhood first. Okay, uh, go ahead. Go first. She's, she's a, um, yeah. Thank you. The grading pieces came from the principals who worked with their department heads, worked with, well, supposed to be the members of the department to come up with the grading um, suggestions that are listed in the learning plan. Mrs. Morgan's exactly right. We're still waiting for guidance from the state to provide to many schools the, or to provide the schools the direction. I think what happened was our teachers and administrators took it a little bit farther and have come up with a plan that they think could work for us. Um, and that's really how this got, this was put into this document. It was from the buildings. Okay, now, now with that, uh, Ms. Faye, do you wanna speak? No, I think it's, that's exactly what I wanted to say. Exactly what, okay. Dr., yeah, exactly what Dr. Schaefer had said. Okay. Um, and anyone else? Oh, I see uh, Ms. Rossi, go ahead. So I'm just trying to clarify. We're talking about two separate documents right now, correct? The, the one you guys are talking about is one that's still in process, not necessarily this memorandum of agreement. It's a separate, um, work to be done, the, con the continuity um, plan, is that, is that correct? Or I'm just trying to clarify. Yeah, uh, so all right, go ahead, Deanna. The memorandum of agreement, <clears throat> I really wanted to get this signed a couple weeks ago um, with just the basic um, few, you know, the couple numbered items that I had. 
this is more in depth, that's fine. Um, this can be signed without the continuity of learning plan sections that we have here. And that is what I would like to accomplish at this meeting. Uh, Deanna, okay. I'm just speaking for myself. Uh, well, hold on. Did you was that was that in, in response to April? Yes, yes, if there were so two different April, you have the floor, April. Yes, yeah, so that's all I was clarifying because the memorandum of agreement is what we have on the table to, to vote for. I was just making sure that there wasn't an additional document that we were looking at that I just didn't receive. So that's what I was just trying to clarify. Okay, um, I see Dr. Shaver Hood. Go ahead. Yes, um, that's true. And what what we would like to do in conjunction with the association would be to go ahead and have the memorandum of agreement signed with the understanding that we are going to work collaboratively to come up with the continuity of learning because we feel like the continuity of learning is an essential document that will guide um, guide our district through this time um, so, so for my own part, uh, to Deanna, you, think you, you had mentioned you wanted to have this signed weeks ago. Uh, the, the first time, what, when did we meet in executive session, uh, Kim, do you remember? Mm. What, was the, what was the date on that, Joyce, do you remember? It was a couple, maybe a couple of weeks ago, Friday. Yeah, yeah. and we had met then, and, and the document we were looking at then is vastly, vastly different than what we've been looking at the last week, the last couple of days. Yeah. Because now it's been extended longer. That was initial. That was something we put together very quickly. And, you know, I made the changes that you wanted and it still wasn't signed. Now we're into the more meat of it. So now we're, you know, I mean, I'm following what other districts are doing as well. well and, so hold on, um, hold on. And if you say it wasn't signed, I, I can't sign it without a committee vote. So that's why we're meeting in open session now to, to discuss this and possibly vote. So I can't just sign it because, you know, you know, you know Dr. Shaverhood and you and possibly me or Joyce or whoever think that it's it's good. I need a whole committee vote. I I was under the impression you haven't met in the last three weeks. I didn't know no, that. I haven't, I haven't met since March twelfth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well I I mean, you know, I don't know. It <laughs> Dr. Shaverhood. Yes. Um we haven't met since we had that meeting in executive session with everything going on that kind of threw our schedule into a little bit of chaos so this is during that time you know things expanded and we were able to the union the association was able to um, add to the memorandum of agreement the question i have though and i i meant to ask it is this is only in effect while we are on um, online learning, correct? And once we come back to regular school, this would go away, right? Correct. Okay. So. Go ahead. Go ahead, Joyce. Sorry. Um. So to that to that point, that was one of my questions. So the first sentence, um, it says that this will apply during the current state of emergency, which is kind of open ended. Um, you know, of course, none of us can predict what's going to happen. So I was wondering if, you know, we could make a change or if you'd considered um, having it state something like instead of during the state of emergency during uh, for the duration of the school closure. I believe it says that. Well, it doesn't say it right in the beginning. It just says this will apply to all employees during the current state of emergency. Um, and then, so, and then the second piece of that is, you know, we we're talking about compensation in here. And from my point of view, we're talking about the current budget year, the current year that we're in, which ends on June 30th. And of course, we're all hoping Praying that this isn't happening still on June 30th, but we can't we can't know that. So 
that's why it's, that's why I was just wondering if you had considered instead of having it be open ended during the current state of emergency, if we could put those items in to define the time that this agreement would be valid. Right. Now I see you, April, but let Deanna, let Deanna answer. Do you want, do you mean that you just want it for this fiscal year? Is that what you're saying? In case yeah, I'm just forbid that it went into September. Um, well, again, so this budget year that we're talking about is through June 30th. Yeah. And because we're talking about compensation in this agreement, um, you know, and the school closure, of course, wouldn't go past June 30th because by then we'd be out of school. Yeah. So I would, I would say to cover both possibilities by saying it's valid during the school closure, but no late, nothing past June 30th. So that covers both possibilities for this current school year. Am I explaining myself correctly? Yeah. So just this, this current year, yeah. That's, um, yeah, that can be added. Okay. Um, Joy, show us it. Um, yeah, I can come back to you. I just I see April's hand up. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come back to me. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I, April, go ahead. So to Joyce's point, right in the first. Um, the first number on the document, it says um, during the COVID-19 school closure, right in that first sentence. So I don't know that it needs to say it twice. It might be a little bit redundant. And then um, at bullet number five, it does say that July 1st, all members of inapplicable units will advance to the next step in the scalary schedule. So I believe that because this is a payroll um, and a compensation uh, related document that it does address that by saying that as of July 1st, it, it obviously it would, I assume by reading that, that it would go into um, the next um, calendar or fiscal for us rather. So it's already in that document between um, bullets one and bullets five. Can I just, so uh, when, when in any other contract, you know, in in the contract that this would be an MOA to, there is a, there is a, there are dates. You know, it's effective from this date to that date. So, yes, it does it does reference a date, but it doesn't. You know, it isn't it doesn't have an effective date. So I think that that is important, especially in this, for that to be included in there. And again, July first, I, I from a budget standpoint, and maybe the superintendent can can tell me, you know, if this is, is a valid concern, I just wouldn't want to agree to anything past the current year, budget year that we're in. And I would, I would just echo that myself too, mm -hmm. but what, you know, whether, whether or not, what, whatever I'm going to vote on, it would, I would want it to, you know, end at the budget year and be revisited. Right. And it could be revisited. Let's hope we don't have to do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, God, yeah. Um, I'm so, so Mary, I'm seeing a shaking head over there. Do you want to comment? <laughs> but you're muted. You're muted. I'm unmuted now. No, I'm just thinking, I unfortunately think this is going to go on much longer than we would hope for. And, you know, and I, I have concerns about extended year and all of that. That's all. Yeah. It, it's not looking good in, in my eyes anyways, which I try to be op optimistic, but it it's not good. All right. So so let oh okay go ahead, Dr. Shiva. <coughs> oh, you're muted. You're muted. Okay. So if we could put the date um, to the end of this school year, to July to June thirtieth. And then if we're still in the situation, we would be revisiting everything because it's going to affect the summer programming. It certainly will affect how we approach next year. And I think this would give us time to see what's working, what's not working and make any adjustments that we would need to. So if the association would be willing to do that, I think that would be a nice time period. 
right. I agree um, with that. Right. Okay. So, so myself to Deanna and or Brian, on item number 16, uh, it says here, employees who do not have regular classroom teaching responsibilities and cannot support remote learning may engage in professional development activities or curriculum work of individuals own design with approval of their direct supervisor. So what would happen if they didn't get approval? And they couldn't support students. Can I speak to that, Deanna? Is that okay? Yeah. Who so, is who's that? It's Melissa. Oh, it's, it's Melissa. Right, it's, your video is like frozen. It's just a picture. Oh, hold on, hold on. My computer's acting really weird. Hold on one second. Hold on. There you go. So I think that this is mostly for a paraprofessional group. And we have recently um, procured an entire 36 course professional development um, I don't know how to, how to play, uh, a, a course load, I guess, of um, 36 classes for our paraprofessionals, including um, some that are offered by our current BCBAs in RBT, Registered Behavior Technician, and also an ABA, Applied Behavior Analysis, um, that they can participate in. So we have those things available for them. And so I think that we have enough um, opportunities available for professional development. That's what I'm hoping is going to happen for a lot of our staff. And I'm hoping that that's, that's going to help us with our paraprofessional group. And I think that that's the group that you're speaking about, or at least I think it is. I don't know, maybe I'm incorrect. So I'll let Deanna and Brian speak on it. I will listen, I'll listen to Deanna or Brian, but Mary, I do see you. I'll get to you after them. Oh, um. Yes, this was essentially for the paraprofessionals um, who wouldn't have teaching responsibilities. And they've been working mostly with their building principals, getting direction from them. But, um, you know, I guess if, if, if they weren't able to do any of the, um, you know, things they were being asked to do, then professional development was going to be probably, as Melissa said, an option. Okay. Um, and Mary. Michael, Mike, certainly it's not a requirement, but certainly it, it right now is an option. And it's an option that we have procured not only for now, but I think for future opportunities, it provides all of our paraprofessionals, everybody with 36 hours of potential um, professional development opportunity in a, in a variety of different topics, as well as an additional um ability to get certified in APA and to get certified in registered behavior tech. So all of those opportunities are now available free of cost to all of our professionals. And I think that we've I think it's it's important not just for now but for future to be able to provide these opportunities for all of our paraprofessionals across the board forever not just for now but for, for times to come as well. Okay. All right thank you. Uh, Mary? So that brings up another question that I've been thinking about. So do we have some sort of MOA with the contracted people that we have, like the BCBAs, on what they're, they're supposed to be doing during this time? Yeah, so the BCBAs that we have under contract right now, we have two. Well, we have three. One who is like part-time consultant basis and two that are full-time employees in our district. And they are providing weekly newsletters. They're providing videos for our, um, so one of our BCAs basically covers all of our ABA programs, all of our um, autism programs. One of our BCAs covers all of our therapeutic learning centers, which is our social emotional programming. And then we have another BCBA who is more of a behavioral consultant and teacher in one of our other programs. So really it's our two that are covering the district as far as BCBA um, supports. And they are providing um, weekly newsletters that they, they provide to the superintendent to review and then they share out weekly. And also videos and they're both attached to all of the Google Classrooms 
for all of our programs. So they participate in all of the daily, weekly, biweekly classroom activities for all of our program classrooms. So that's how we're handling all of our BCBAs right now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, oh, Dr. Shaver Hood. No, you were unmuted. Now you muted yourself, I think. <laughs> okay. All right. So I just want to thank all of the teachers, all of our paraprofessionals, everyone for how they have stepped up. And it's just been amazing what everyone has done uh, collaboratively working together. And so I certainly do not want to leave anyone with the impression that this discussion of the MOA has stopped any of the hard work or the working with students. It hasn't. And I, I hope everybody knows how grateful we are. Yeah. And actually, thank you for saying that. That kind of segues into what I wanted to say, because because you know, we, you, you and I, in Ms. Becchio, you kind of talk a little more than most because of the budget and such. And and every every time in those meetings, you're you're telling me uh, like how, how how much everyone's working now, way more. I mean, not some some people way more than they were before all this. And it kind of brings me into the next question. So, I mean, you, I guess would everyone, you know, any of the staff, would they, would the staff agree? I mean, people are really working probably even more hard than they usually do. Yeah. I guess I'm seeing Ms. Cote nodding. I'm seeing uh, Mr. Palladino yeah. nodding. Everybody's nodding. I got a, I got a very uh, rigorous I nod know. there from Ms. Cote. I would say, um, so in my discussions with, so we are on a listserv and a weekly meeting with probably over a thousand people who are special ed directors, either in um, public school systems, in um, collaborative situations or in private school situations across the Commonwealth, it's over a thousand people. And we participate, and Dr. Schwamm participates in these meetings with me as well. And I have to say that we are, um, Dr. Schwamm and I are amazed at how far ahead our district is in what other people are doing. And sometimes even, and please, Dr. Schwamm, jump in here, but I think sometimes even further ahead than the state in some of the stuff that's going on, um, we are providing. Oh no, you just froze. Oh no. Yeah. That was good stuff too, keep going. Can you hear me? <laughs> I hear you now, yeah. Got me now? Yeah. Yeah, so I think that we're providing um, more than what the rest of the state is providing. And I think we are in a much better position and Dr. Schwamm participates in all these meetings with me. I think we are in a much better position than most of the state when it comes to what we are providing for parents. So I'm super proud of what we're doing for our families and super proud of what we're doing for our students. And I think that we, that our staff really, as I meet with them in several Zoom meetings every day of the week, um, several meetings a day, I am seeing um, the, the dedication and the um, the amazing um, thinking outside of the box that we do as as a school community to support our students and support our staff and support our families it's amazing to me like I, I every day I send things to the superintendent to the assistant superintendent about the things that our staff is doing and it, it really amazes me the links that we are going to support our families and our and our kids and our staff and it's, it's amazing to me. So I think that we are way ahead of, of what other people are doing in the state. And I think that we are um, in a place where I feel, I feel good and I feel um, happy about the, the services that we are doing to support our kids. Yeah, so last night when, when I, you all were probably trying to test this out with Mr. Ruiz and stuff, I, I couldn't make it. Because I was on a Zoom call with, on, as because I'm a member of the Cape Cod Collaborative, and um, in, in the several you know member districts that are a part of that, like I think technically 19, but usually about like 12 to 14 show up. So so we were doing sort of a round table of what everyone's doing in the districts and stuff like that. And, and yeah, we 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 are we are, we are like I, I had to like bite my tongue. I didn't want to gloat too much, you know, because I was 
just I was just so pr proud of our district, but I but I did I, I did I did cheerlead a bit. Um, I have to tell you, like Dr. Schwab and I will sit on some of these phone calls, and we are sometimes shocked and sometimes proud and sometimes dismayed about where we are in comparison to other districts. And we yeah. are so far ahead. And Andrea, please jump in. So far ahead in some of these meetings that Andrea and I will be back and forth on text messages saying, oh my gosh, we're already doing all of this. And, and it's, it's, it's empowering in a way. Um, and, and we feel really good about what we're doing for our families and for our children. Yeah, and it's like I was telling Dr. Schwamm at one of the meetings, I forget what, maybe it was over the phone, but um, I was saying that, you know, we we as a district, you know, when we had, we did the one-to-one, -one, you know, on, on the Chromebooks, all the way down to like second grade, you know, and I remember um, during my first term, like that just begun, and I don't think it was even discussed to go that quite that low on the grades. Then when it came back, I, I started in, in, in action. I was like, wow, they it's everyone's got them now. This is something, you know? And so, and so in that, in that sense, so, so we were really poised, you know, I don't think anyone really, I don't know if anyone could, could have foreseen this, but we were really poised for when it happened for all this remote learning right off the bat, you know, and, uh, and I don't, I'm sorry, but I see Brian keep raising his hand very patiently. Go ahead, Brian. Well, thanks, Mr. Flaherty. I just did want, want to echo what people are saying, being, being involved with, um, with some of the things that I've done. I, I, I'm part of a network of teachers, literally from Nantucket to, Haverhill to East Hampton, uh, and two things I wanted to say. One, we are we are doing more specific work than a lot of other districts are. That is to say, so many um, so many of our students are receiving work that connects with what they're doing, rather than here's a list of things. Watch WGBH for half an hour, and we'll see you on Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot more specific, and at the same time, uh, I think it's also worth noting that. One thing that we're seeing kind of in a column from Wareham all the way up, I'm thrilled that we have guidance from the commissioner that was issued over the signatures of the commissioner of the Board of Education and the representatives of the teachers of this Commonwealth. And down through here, you, you've heard some, some of the difficulties of working together remotely, but um, a lot compared to many districts in the state, the administration and the teachers are still working toward being on the same page as we do this for the good of our students and so that the learning works and recognizing things are completely different. A lot of people are making mistakes. I feel like an undergrad again. I, I, my students have been very patient because heaven knows the difference between the Google Doc and the Google Form, and you can do this, but you can't do that. They've been very patient. I've made a lot of mistakes. We're all learning this together. But so far, they're getting something that ties into what they were doing from August through February, a lot more than other students in, in the Commonwealth are. I just hope we can keep that keep that going in a way that that's cognizant of that we're, this is all new to everybody. This is all new to everybody, and um, there's, we're going to go through some tough stuff before we come out the other side. Um, but yeah. we appreciate the support, and I know a lot of us have recognized the support that we've gotten um, to get to this point with our students, and we miss them. We love our students, and yeah. we miss them, and it is, you know, I... I was really, you know, I, I tend to look forward to April vacation, but that's nothing compared to how much I'm looking forward to seeing my students again. Yeah. Um, and I worry about them, and we all do. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, April, I, I see your hand up. Yeah, uh, no, I, I absolutely agree with everybody, and I, from just from other moms and other districts and other um, educators I know around the state, we are definitely way above where a lot of people are which is a huge accomplishment. And I think all of our teachers and staff in our entire district deserves a round of applause. I just know that this would tie into something farther down the agenda. And I just feel like we've gotten away from voting on the memorandum. And I just yeah. wanna to try to bring that back so we could get that um, kind of voted on and then well, continue to move on with the agenda. Well, th thank you, Vice Chair, um, I appreciate it. I, but uh, but so so anyway so it segues because I mean all of the hard work that um that our that our staff and teachers are doing, and it brings me to the point here on on item number nine on the MOU uh, MOA. Um, so so I, I mean we're all in agreement that everyone's working really hard. More, a lot of us more than usual, 
but now we want to set up some joint labor management committee to, you know, go over, you know, re responsibilities and stuff. I mean, is that really necessary? I, I, I really, I, when I saw the district's version, uh, you know, that included the continuity plan, I, I really liked it. And it can, because, because so little of, so little of what we're discussing right here is it, focused on students. It's, it's more so on, on, on staff and, 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 and I know, and I know, that, of course, when everyone, everyone, the whole point of the whole past 10 minutes was to, you know, gloat about how great our students are doing and they're being taught and everything. But I, I'd like to see it memorialized in something more, more, more you know, like, like in the, the district's version that had all of that, all of, all of the, um, the per school, like all what was, you know, hopefully going to happen with students and learning and all that. But it's, it's not in this. So, so, I mean, do we really need to go through a joint labor management thing to, to do that in, in this hopefully short amount of time this is going to be? And I don't, when I say short amount, I mean, it's, it's right now it's, it's up to like what, uh, May 4th or something, but we only have so much time left in the, in the, in the school year. Uh, so I see Deanna with her hand up. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So Mike, that is what we were just talking about, that the learning plan would be done and accomplished at the building level with teachers and administration at each building. I'm an elementary school teacher. You're not a high school teacher. I would not want to be deciding um, how they grade their students right now. I think it should be left up to them. I've heard, um, you know, um, at all the different schools, their, their um, you know, versions of what they want. And it, it, it may not be this. It may be this, or maybe some of this. But, um, and it's not some drawn out thing. It's gonna be something that's done relatively quickly. So let, let me ask you this. So now, nothing has been signed, uh, you know, nothing are agreed upon by both of us, you know, the committee and the union. And, and yeah, I mean, so, I know this concern about pay. Now you guys are all being paid, right? No, nobody's lost any money. I'm asking. That's, that's true, right? Uh, now, is there any concern that you might? I mean, I, I know this committee is going to support you guys, but the, do you, are you guys worried that you might lose money? Well, that's to Brian, Brian or Deanna. Could, could I just answer that, Deanna? Yeah. Um, I'm not concerned as an expression of the school committee, the administration wearing him. I know there are districts that are actively um, considering whether to withhold pay from their educators. I know there are districts that have already announced they're, they are furloughing educators during this. Yeah. So some of this so, language so. came up right, right when we went into closure and um, statewide associations were looking for language because we knew that some school committees were not firm on the idea of um, compensating their educators. So I guess my, my question is like, what would happen, what would happen if nothing, nothing was agreed to right now? Everyone's working, our students are learning that they're, they're so well ahead of everybody else that, that we've just discussed. So, so what if we didn't, what if people just kept going as they were going and is there any harm in that? Without this agreement being signed? Yeah. Hypothetically, yeah. Well, that would not sit well with me, no. <laughs> it, no, no, how come? So, so, like, what's your concern? Like, what's not being addressed right now? I, I can't hear you for some reason. I know you're not muted. Mary, I see you, but I'd like to hear from Deanna. Try, try again, Deanna. Oh, or Brian. D Deanna, do you want to go first? I just, I just had a thought with what Mr. Cloudy was saying. No, because I, I froze and I didn't hear anything he said. <laughs> oh, you didn't hear anything I said? <laughs> no. Oh, I was just saying, like, so, so, I, like what, so you had a problem with it, not if there was no agreement. And my question was, so, like, what's really not being addressed right now that, that, that concerns you? Everything that's in here, it's not that it's not being addressed, but mm. it's, it's a verbal agreement that you know um but, but it's it, it but it has or has not been working as is we we've been we've been making it up as we go along very well mr Flaherty. um and many schools and many staff are going in the direction that that seems right to them this agreement like 
any written agreement of any sort provides a roadmap, provides something that all the hundreds of educators and the thousands of students in Wareham understand that this is where we're coming from. There is nothing we have about what to do in a pandemic. And I think there was just a natural instinct to understand, well, if someone has to self-quarantine, what is that? What is going to happen to them? Um, there's an understanding of we have evaluators wondering, do I do an evaluation on somebody's lesson on something they've never been trained to do or not? We have questions about how do we, if we want to use Zoom, but we have read all these articles and all these concerns about Zoom as a technology, um, how do I make sure that, um, what is my duty as a mandated reporter if I'm doing a video call and I think I see something, but I have no idea how to contextualize it. Those are just some of the issues in this agreement that is not too dissimilar from what you're seeing across the Commonwealth. So we have, we, we have some platform to build from throughout this. I think a wild optimist would say that we're going to be in this situation for the next four weeks and to know how to handle it if somebody does get sick, how to handle it if um, there is something that comes into this new situation we have never lived through before that everybody yeah, and, and the first, the first one, can under, yeah, and, understand and, that because right now we don't and we're relying on, there's a lot of good faith and a lot of people, as I said, are, we're making it up as best we can but it, it would be great for everybody to have a common understanding of what is going to happen regardless of your classroom, your school, or the state of your health. Yeah, and the first one that we discussed way back, I mean, it, you know, was really to address what you're talking about, you know, what if, you know, someone gets it, what, you know, the quarantine or what have you. And then, and then now it's morphed into, you know, this thing that really would normally go through regular negotiations. It's that, it's that, it's that big, you know, with lawyers and everything, you know, like, I mean, present, you know, at the time. Um, it's a lot for me to, to vote on tonight. Um, but you bring up the evaluations. Like, why, why, why would they have to, like, stop or pause? I mean, the, no evaluations at all? Or Well, as is common practice across the state, there's an understanding that to evaluate somebody on something they have never been trained to do would not result in very... But when, when, isn't that all taken? Isn't that all taken into consideration? I mean, I mean, the, the superintendent hasn't had to do to deal with this. I mean, should we not evaluate her? I, I can't speak to the school committee's role. Um, mm -hmm. I just know that there's there's been a general consensus around the state. I was never asked. I was never trained in remote learning, and I know I have colleagues who are excellent educators who are having varying degrees of success with this. We are not at all, no, no educator is walking away from their students right now. We're putting more into it than we have, as we were just talking about a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, Dr. Schwann. Yeah, oh, hold on, I'm sorry. Everybody, as, as Brian and Diana and myself have been speaking, I think I saw um, Mary and April. <laughs> so so if, if, if you can wait, Dr. Schwann, I'd like to get to them, or is it, is it urgent? All right, so I think Mary, I think you had your hand up a while ago. Yeah, so if I can remember now, no. Um, but I mean, Brian has a lot of good points. Like this is a very unknown territory for us. And so we need some sort of um, agreement that, for instance, like w with the evaluations, I think Brian already brought that up, that you, we can't evaluate teachers on this because they haven't been trained. Um, and I'll even go with the superintendent. We can't evaluate her on this whole time either. This is a very unknown territory. And I think the, the agreement gives people a, a bit of relief and um, helps them, you know, not be so anxious because it, it's a very stressful time. So if I wanted to say what an awesome job the superintendent did in positioning us to be ready for this, that wouldn't be appropriate to say in an evaluation? <laughs> Dr. Not Dr. necessarily <laughs> say that, but I'm just saying that I don't think we, we can use anything negative against it. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Shaver. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, I would be very happy if you said that in my evaluation. But, oh. but I really would like to say it is on the evaluations of staff, Brian's right and Mary's right. Um, this is so unknown and 
and we have some people that have been online for a while and have taught online and they're doing wonderful but we have some real novices and they're doing an outstanding job as well yeah. and i think from our standpoint what we'd really like to be able to do is just to give you know the positive nobody is looking to be critical at all um and it's just to be we'd just like to be able to recognize but okay. that's something that is being talked about throughout the state, how that's going to go and how we're going to move forward. For To me, getting this agreement in place gives assurance to our staff that yes, we are standing behind them, we're willing to work with them, and I hope that the committee would vote to um, accept the memorandum of agreement. With that said, I would also then be willing to work with the association at the various building levels and come back at the next meeting to present the continuum of learning plan so you can see how it just as we've worked with the various buildings. Uh, I just think right now there are so many unknown factors and our staff just needs to know that we're behind them. Okay. Uh, April, you've been really patient. Sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. So at, at the end of the day, I mean, it, as many different avenues as we've gone off on um, how well our district is doing and all of the things that this memorandum would cover, I think everybody agrees that this is a completely unprecedented time. But at the end of the day, every single one of the teachers in the union and the WEA have a contract. And all this is doing is this is adding verbiage to their contract because this is such a new um, world to navigate during this particular crisis, which is mentioned in the memorandum. It's only during this particular crisis. So going, I, you know, as, as much as we've kind of gone on a little bit off onto different tangents about you know, so many of the positive things, which I obviously love hearing, at the end of the day, this is just putting verbiage into their contract to cover them um, during this particularly specific state of emergency, which is, which is stated. So, I mean, I, I don't know, because once this state of emergency is no longer declared, this becomes a moot point and they just resolve back to their existing contract. Okay. Um, uh, Joyce, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I just, I just had a question um, about, I believe it's number four. Um, it, it, it has to do with um, receiving full pay if someone is home because they're being quarantined. And I guess um, my question is about this item, but in just in general, there's no reference in this document to the um, legislation that was passed um, that addresses extra sick time and um, extended family medical leave around, um, you know, around COVID. So I was just wondering from Brian or Deanna, if that was, if you considered including that or why you didn't include it? Um, I think it's because things are moving so fast, Mrs. Biakiaki. You know, mm -hmm. when we started drafting this, the legislation was a hope and a prayer. And now you hear about the feds looking at a phase four of legislation. Um, and, and, you know, Mr. Flaherty's right. We, this would ordinarily be something we'd hammer out over a long period of time. I just think we want everybody on Monday to know that we have something in place that we're starting to figure this out. Uh, as soon as we stop to put that in there, and you raise a good point that isn't included, who knows what else would be coming from the state or the feds. You know, the Senate just passed a bill in MCAS today. If we wait to have control over everything, um, I don't know when we'd actually be able to get this done. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just feel comfortable saying, it's in connection with so many educators, we just want to have an idea of where we're starting from on Monday. And that's what this is. Right, and I'm certainly not implying that that shouldn't be the case, that if someone were to be sick or quarantined, I'm just saying that there are, you know, these different, these, this different legislation that addresses how employees are paid. Um, so, and like you said, it, it needs to happen quickly, and I totally agree with that. 
Um, so I guess I was just looking for some type of reference to that, that you know, pay would be subject to that legislation or you know, some kind of reference to that. Would, and I, I realize I may be speaking out of turn, but at the very beginning, um, there is there is verbiage about these protocols and procedures are aligned with and subject to the guidance issued by Commissioner Riley on March 26, 2020. If there were to be a phrase in there and relevant state and federal legislation passed in reaction to this crisis, would that address that concern? Um, sure, you're talking about like the first introductory paragraph? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, that would be good. So, so, so April, hold on. Um, so it's important, Joyce, like you, you know, you bring up, you know, stuff, th these things in, in Brian's in agreement and stuff, but should we be kind of documenting these as like amendments, if that's what you want to do? Um, Am amendments, you no, know, from, from, from a vote point of view, meaning like, you know, I, you know, I, I motion to amend, you know, this to include blah. Oh, I see what you mean. So we're making, we're talking yeah. about making changes to this document. Yeah, not, 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 not add a whole amendment, you know, back page, but you know, it's, if you want to amend a paragraph, do you want to make a motion to do that and move forward? Uh, sure. I'll just have to remember what I said. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, April, uh, go ahead. So just just another clarifying question. Regardless of the contract or existing contract, and regardless of wherever we stand in the vote for the memorandum, wouldn't legislation supersede that anyways? And does it need to be in writing if the legislation is ever changing during this time? Because it's unprecedented for the government as well. Um, I, well, were you asking me? I, I think that- I'm just asking in general. But I think in this case, it is important because this is stating what the members will receive as far as pay. And I think, I just think, yeah, I just think it's important to, to reference that as in reference to pay because there were some pretty big pieces of legislation passed and if they do apply, then I think they should be noted in here. So are you saying that as Brian had stated after the sentence where it says that, you know, um, about the closures implemented by Commissioner Riley, would then the sentence after that include, you know, the, payment or anything would go like something to mention that would include any and all legislative changes that would affect any of the um, line items below during this time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I can, I can agree with that. Okay. Okay. Um, anyone else? All right. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we're probably getting close to a, a vote one way or the other on this. Um, do you want to make the motion that, with an amendment on, on a paragraph or something, Joyce? Yeah. <coughs> um, so I guess I, I would move to approve the MOA. No. Is that what you want me to do? I'm not approve yet, but move to amend the MOA. Okay. Um, read blah. You know. Okay. So I would move to amend the MOA in the opening paragraph after the last sentence. I would add the words and any and all federal and state legislation. Uh, Brian, how did you put it? Um, any and all federal and state legislation passed um, to deal with this crisis or to that would affect reaction? the line items below, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or uh, pa any federal state legislation um, passed in reaction to the unique conditions of this crisis. Okay. So, do you want me to start over, Mike? Sure. Let me just go with just what Brian just said. I, I, can, I mean, if you're comfortable with what Brian said, you can say, you, know, I, I, you can say so moved. Okay, so moved. Okay. Second. Okay, so we have the motion in the second, and, and all this is being recorded, and whoever's doing the minutes will, you know, be able to track all that. Um, so in, on that particular amendment, do we, do we have um, any more further discussion? 
All right, seeing none, the move, so voting on the amendment to, to amend, um, I'm gonna take to the roll call. So uh, Joyce? Yes. Mary? Yes. April? Yes. Uh, myself, yes. Okay. And so, and so another amendment, I, 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 just, I don't have it, I do have it right in front of me, but where do you think it would be best to put in there to, to have this end on, you know, the end of the, the, the school year and be revisited? Maybe even after that sentence where it says all, all you know, pursuant to the, you know, whatever that we just said to the legislation um, up until June 30th of 2020, just add it to that sentence. And that way, if it needs to be revisited, it'll have expired and we can just readdress it as needed. Well, we need to, we need to though, um, substitute for during the current state of emergency. So I do, I do actually have that written down, Mike. So right, awesome. I guess I would amend the first sentence um, to say will apply to all employees for the duration of the school closure and to be in effect I have written no later than the end of the fiscal year, June 30th, 2020. Sounds great to me. Does, does, uh, do I have someone to say so moved? So, so moved. <laughs> so I think that's April yeah. Mary. <laughs> so, um, so, so there's a, there's, so a second, somebody just shout second. 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 All right. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, so, so, so any, any further discussion on, on that particular amendment? No. Being none. Um, Kim, you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, yes. With, with both, even the even the prior one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. So with that, no further discussion. Um, I'll, I'll do the roll call. So I'll I'll try, I'll try to pick on someone besides Joyce. <laughs> um, Mary. Yes. April. Yes. Uh, Joyce. Yes. Uh, myself, yes. And with that, I mean, unless anyone has anything else to amend, if everyone's comfortable with it, um, if you want to take a motion to vote on the whole thing as amended. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, April? Yes. Mary? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Myself, yes. So it's uh, 400 uh, passes as amended. Thank you for coming. Yeah, you're welcome to stay, I suppose. <laughs> Santa, you're already in. <laughs> um, Thank um, you for the invitation. Thank you for the work you're doing. Yeah. You're Thank welcome. you for the work you're doing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so with that, is there any else, anything else to discuss on the MOA? We've just been voted on, so. Seeing none, let's go move on to the next item. Mid-year attendance report. Uh, Kim, you're still muted there. Okay. So yes, you have in your packet the mid-year attendance report for this for our district. And when you look at our attendance rates, we're pretty for the last three years, we've been at 94.6 or 94.1, the state is 94.6. So we're hovering fairly close to the state um, and we've come up one tenth of a point. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, anyone? Miss um, Rossi. This was all up until this, uh, this, this time period, correct? What we're dealing with now is not included in the uh, attendance, I'm assuming? That's correct. Okay, just clarifying. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, awesome. Great. <clears throat> so moving on, um, principals report on online learning. Thank you for coming, by the way. Great to see you guys. Who wants so, to go first? <laughs> I'll go. I don't mind. Yeah, John. Okay. 
so as uh, Mr. Fitzgerald had said before, this um, new way of learning has been a lot of work on everybody, on um, teachers, on kids, on families, and um, we just really support everyone. I've heard from a lot of um, friends in other districts and they're just getting started. So we are very ahead of, of the game. Um, and that just, that's the leadership of, of our district and it's just everyone really pitching in. So we established Google Classrooms in our school. Um, Ms. Filippo, Mrs. Murphy went ahead and created them all so that they would be pretty uniform in the event that a teacher were to get sick, somebody could take over the class. Uh, each morning there's an activity where students log on. It's a calm classroom activity. It's like a breathing type of an activity, uh, which we thought was important due to all the student anxiety as well. Um, then the teachers will post their, class, their um, lessons in Google Classroom. Our support staff are involved in that, you know, the school counselor, the social workers, they're all involved in, in the Google Classrooms as well. Um, MindNet has a schedule which has been working well. We have ELA that we're teaching on certain days, math is on certain days, so it's pretty routine for the students. Science and social studies is given, and they have the unified arts. So that has been going well. Um, the teachers are working on, we've had discussions here tonight about grading and um, how that's going to look. They're communicating with their students in a variety of ways. Um, the elementary students have really started using their email really for the first time all year. Um, so they're communicating by email with the teacher. The teachers are now doing Zoom meetings. So they're doing morning meetings with their students. They're very excited to see each other. They're very excited to see all of their teachers. They are feeling a, a huge um, anxiety over this whole thing. So just having that face in front of the screen has been really reassuring for them. So this is a lot of the feedback that I'm getting. Uh, the teachers are also working with their grade level uh, content team. So they're having Zoom meetings off camera. Um, I mean, off my camera with them. Uh, students are completing their assignments. They're sending in the, them into the teachers. Um, we have packets we've sent out for those families who are not online right now. Um, some families came by the school when this first started and picked up the textbooks. So we're making sure we're, we're reaching out to everyone. Special ed teachers are connected to the Google Classrooms. They've reached out um, to lend support in any way that they can through these enrichment activities that we've been doing. Um, teachers are going above and beyond. They're online all day. You know, I, I know it, we say during the school day, they wanna make sure their students are feeling relieved and not as anxious. So they're trying to help as much as they can. They're calling on their personal phones, um, which I think is great. Um, not necessary, but it's great. Um, they're texting, they're emailing, they're using Dojo, any way that they can to communicate. We're trying to um, keep things as routine as possible. So we still do our student of the week. Um, we did our Scotty Montero awards. Um, a teacher wanted to do birthday notifications, so she sent me the invite and I did a flip grid uh, greeting to a student. And we are all um, learning a whole lot of new things. Um, one of the teachers said, I'm really out of my comfort zone, but I've made a point to learn these different things so that I can teach my students how to use it. So it is new for everybody. And they're just using a variety of platforms um, with the math and the reading, Lexier, ABCR, ST Math, um, different programs they're using, as I mentioned, Flipgrid, um, Screencastify, Explain Everything. This is all new to our staff. Um, and I really have to give um, Mrs. Murphy, Ms. Filippo a huge amount of credit, especially Ms. Filippo, because she's been putting out a ton of videos on Google Classroom for parents. Um, what is Google Classroom? Um, how do you do it? Um, videos for students on how to do the daily attendance. Anything the teachers need, we've made sure that they have in order to do what they need to do, which is teach. In this, yeah, um, a huge amount of shout outs for staff at Minot, at Degas, at the middle school for putting out these videos because they have gone above and beyond to give parents 
um, split screen ways to be able to learn how to get on when they don't know how. And it's amazing to me to understand how these, um, how the parents are able to learn from staff how to get on to these sites because a lot of parents don't know. So the staff is able to split screen and be able to show them via split screen how to get on, how to walk through the site and how to be able to get on Google Classroom, how to be able to get on um, DoxyMe, how to get on all these sites that we are able to provide services to our kids. And the staff is able to do that through these platforms and it's amazing, it really is. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I check in with staff twice a week. So I have my Zoom meetings with grade three staff, a separate one for paraprofessionals, grade four, and then my support staff. And they all have the meeting ID so they can join in on anybody's Zoom meeting um, as we go forth. Um, in addition, um, Ms. Filippo and Mrs. Murphy also have Zoom meetings. So if they have specific questions for them, um, they've been online helping out. They've completed um, a slideshow of their home workspace. So that's on the district website. We had shared that. Um, the paraprofessionals, we've talked about them. They're helping students. They're in the Google Classroom as well. They're reaching out. They have been amaz amazing as far as making um, positive notes, um, jokes and riddles that they have dropped off for the lunches. So all these things go in the, the lunch bags and the breakfast bags. I have staff who have made 1,000 to 1,500 already. Yeah. So they, they really are trying to support the kids and make sure the, the, the students know that, you know, we really care about everything that's going on with them. Yeah. Uh, we have still staff get-togethers. Um, Mr. Hart held a, are you smarter than a fourth grader in general music trivia um, on one of the Zoom meetings. We have a re remote work bingo. We still do knitting and crafting with uh, Mrs. Salazis, um, Bagel Friday, and, and a variety of other things just to keep the morale of the staff up as well. Um, I'm invited to many of the morning meetings as well as um, Mrs. Murphy is. Mrs. Uh, Kiernan, my OT, has been making videos. So she has shared that on WCTV, which we were grateful for that link. Um, thank you for sending that, Dr. Schwamm. And just, Everyone's trying to reach out as much as we can to families to make sure they have what is needed to get through this. Um, the tech department, I have to say, has been amazing at troubleshooting with families on things. Um, I know um, anything that's come up, whether it's a new Chromebook, we just make sure that um, the students have what they needed. So that's uh, basically mine at 101 wrap up. And I would say that our BCBAs have been amazing at providing videos and links and supports for our families. They've done them on our individual school websites as well as our um, Wareham Public Schools website to be able to give families opportunities to be able to access resources in a variety of different areas, PT, OT, speech and language, ABA, social emotional learning and we are uh, honestly eons above any other districts around us so i'm super proud of the fact that we have all of these resources available for our families and we are always checking in consistently um, with all of our families who have the neediest students in our district and we are always uh, very vigilant about that piece, about checking in with these families who have the neediest students who need the most support in our district. And that's the reason why um, most of us are here and continuing to keep active and um, providing these supports for our students and our families because we wanna make sure that they have these supports available for them during this time. Excellent. So, um, Ms. Siemens, earlier earlier in your thing, you mentioned that the, the kids are really happy to see their fa the faces of their classmates and stuff. Now, when there's that many, are they tiny little like little thumbnails on the screen, or how does that work? It depends on how many um, sign on at that particular time. If they join in on the morning meeting, 
they may not be able to. Sometimes some of our kids can't get on until nighttime because mm -hmm. of dad's coming home with a hot spot. Um, yeah. Or families don't want the students online until they get home from work. So there's a variety of times. So it's not everybody, uh, but the ones that have been able to get on, they're very excited to see their, their classmates. Um, so I think uh, Ms. Morgan has a question. Uh, you're, yes. Yeah, so what is the average, do you think, of the students signing on? So some of our classrooms, it's 100% that they've been on, whether it's um, the attendance or they're doing their work. I have about eight families that I know of right now that are having difficulty. Some don't have internet at all. Some are having um, internet issues sporadically. Um, I do have some families that are with the textbooks and the paper right now. So we're still trying to reach for them, but there's not a whole lot of families that are accessing. What we're trying to do now is check in with the families for the students that aren't completing all of the work. They're doing some of it, but not all. So we're touching base with them to see if there's anything else that they need in order to complete the work. Uh, anyone else for Ms. Siemens? <laughs> Ms. Chandler. Well, hello everyone. Um, I would reiterate exactly what Joan said is that this is a, a definite and what we've all been saying that it's definitely a different time. We're kind of, you know, mowing down the path, so to speak. Uh, it's been a, such a creative time for the DECAS teachers and paras and all of our staff who have found new ways of approaching learning uh, and really out of their technology comfort zone. Some of my uh, teachers have tried different things they've never ever tried before. And like Ms. Siemens said, we're doing um, Google Classroom, Class Dojo, Flipgrid. Flipgrid, we have Weebly going on as well. So there's a lot of different platforms and uh, it's exciting. And also, if you look at this Zoom here, you know, even on Zoom, if you see at the bottom, it says where it says invite participant share screen, that share screen gives the teachers an opportunity to show content. Um, I became familiar with this when uh, a couple weeks ago, my, when my preschooler had his morning meeting and the teacher was bringing the weather in and bringing in a book to read. So children can see the content on the screen there with that share screen. Um, tool right there on Zoom. Uh, yeah, it's a new world, so we're trying it, but please look at our Facebook page, uh, School Committee on John W. Deacus School. You'll see the amazing posts, the videos that we have um, <laughs> happening, and you can see uh, us all live and in action. Uh, I'm really, really proud of our staff. Um, our number one has always been relationships and making sure that our social emotional health is well and so we're keeping up with our relationships with um, staff and students through platforms such as zoom here and uh, so look at our Facebook we've got some awesome videos I don't know if anybody has seen some of them already but grade one has done a video the preschool has done a video and we have a really I'm so excited about the upcoming um, video that we have coming up, but it, I'm not going to, it's going to be a secret. And that's really what's going on at DECAS. All right, so I was going to put it to the committee, but I think Mr. Palladino had something to say. I, I think we might all, all have something to say, but <clears throat> I think Joan did a great job of uh, covering a lot of what we're all doing. But I, I just want to go back to the beginning of the process because I, I know it's been mentioned but I, and, I, and I do hope we hear it on both of their evaluations, but this was really driven by uh, Kim and Andrea, who really got the ball rolling at a very early stage. A at a point in time where I was wondering, would we ever get to this point and was hoping we would never get to this point. Um, but it's really a testament to their leadership <clears throat> that we're here, <clears throat> excuse me, today, and in this position um, where I get multiple was getting multiple calls uh, and sometimes emails from other schools in regards to what are you guys doing we are three weeks ahead of the average school in the state uh, some schools just rolled out their program this week um, so we are uh, above and beyond and, and again I, I do hope that that is uh, referenced in their evaluation at, at a school committee meeting when it's appropriate obviously um, but we were very fortunate to have that and we had that, that template, if you will, 
uh, to get the get the ball rolling. And um, it was very seamless at the high school. Again, you mentioned the one-on-one and us having the one-on-one. Uh, that definitely uh, gave us a head start. And then at the high school, a lot of the teachers, I, was, I think 94% of the teachers were already using the Google Classroom. So that allowed for a very easy transition into the online learning. And uh, I do have um, just some notes um, uh, for you today that uh, teachers are checking in with students, not just for academic, but also for emotional uh, health. And uh, we have a very high participation rate, uh, over 92% on a daily basis. We are tracking uh, students' uh, involvement. I guess you'd call it attendance. And uh, the teachers are very engaged. Uh, Joan mentioned all the meetings that they have. Um, Over 90% of the students are participating in those meetings. And um, guidance and special ed and sports staff was mentioned. And I, and I like what Joan said about the paraprofessionals because I feel they are the key um, to this process being successful. And we have assigned them um, to a handful of students each uh, above and beyond what they already do uh, to support students in the classroom. Um, <clears throat> we have very high, we surveyed the students, very high percentage of students uh, that say that they feel supported, uh, 95% to be exact, uh, are feeling very supported. Um, And then I I have some quotes uh, that I'd love to share with you um, uh, of what they like. They like being able to do the assignments at a time that's convenient for them. They like the fact that they can reach out to the teachers and the students feel they're available uh, whenever they need them, which I can attest the teachers are working around the clock and they've all mentioned they're working harder than they were when they were in the classroom. Uh, There's fewer distractions. Many of the teachers are working, uh, as as I mentioned, uh, many hours during the day. They like the Zoom and Google Meet calls, and um, the online learning is making me work independent, was a quote from one of the students. Uh, What they don't like is they miss the teacher interaction. Uh, Sometimes it's harder to understand the assignments. Uh, Sometimes it's tougher to stay focused when you're at home. Uh, They have a tough time balancing everything, and it's kind of boring when you can't talk in person to a teacher. So that's some feedback from the students. But overall, uh, the staff, I, again, I don't think it's unique to the high school, has adapted well. They've done a tremendous job. They've kept the ball rolling. And, um, you know, they're doing what they need to do to support the students and make sure learning can continue to happen at the high school. That's it. Um, I see April has a question. Not a question. I just wanted to, to you know, tag on to um, Mr. Palladino and uh, Joan and Bethany all um, that the fact that the the specialists have been in contact. I have, you know, a student with a 504 in my house and another student um, who uses the support services through Gosnold. And we've been in contact multiple days a week, getting calls from the guidance counselors and things like that. So I, you know, even with the attendance, if the student is missing that one particular memo, you're getting an email from a teacher instantly making sure that you know, you're know you double checking with your high schooler that things are getting done. So I've been extremely impressed with how our district is so far ahead of everyone else I know in the state as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Well, April, that. I would say that all of our, uh, I had a meeting today with all of our guidance counselors, mm-hmm. all of our social workers, all of our psychologists, and all of our behavior specialists. And everybody is reaching out to all of their students um, and making sure that they are touching base, making sure that they are able to um, hopefully understand what their needs are. And some of the needs are beyond anything that we would think of as educators. Some of them are, I need milk. I need batteries for my child's hearing aid i need you know so a lot of these needs are things that we wouldn't have anticipated before but that's okay and so i think that all of our um specialists who i met with today i met with 30 of them today are thinking about things that our students need what they need what their parents need what their caregivers need and i think that's important and i think we also need to think about what our our caregivers need, what our frontline people need, what our cafeteria workers need, what our bus drivers need, what the people who are providing services for our kids need. And I think we are very cognizant of that. And we are trying to be very um, cognizant of providing services and support for those people 
who are providing those frontline services. So I think that um, we have been trying really hard to support that and trying really hard to make sure that everybody who needs to be on board to support these, these people and these families and these kiddos are there to support them. So I'm hoping that we are successful in that and we are trying to coordinate that effort and all the principals. I know Joan and I have been on several Zoom meetings with a lot of our staff to try to make sure that we are supporting all of our service providers to be able to support our families, support our parents, and support our students through this throughout this whole crisis. Yeah, that, thank you very much for that. Um, and so, does anyone else have anything else for, else for Scott or anyone? I guess. Um, Ms. Ms. Fundulis, did you want to have a report or anything? Or sure. What about Ms. Cote? Well, sure. Well, uh, well, the night schools, I can be real quick with the night school. So we have 44 students, um, 37 are checked in. So we are still working on um, pulling in seven students. We're in touch every day. I'm talking to parents and the students, trying to get them to connect. Um, for a lot of our students, they work day, so they, they have a job during the day. And many of them work at grocery stores and some of the restaurants. So they are considered essential workers. So we have to be very flexible with them. And our staff are amazing, just like at all the other schools. And we're doing the Google Classroom. And um, so we're just plugging along like all the other schools. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. That's good insight. You know, thinking these people are <laughs> essential outside yeah. of the classroom. Wow. Um, Ms. Cote. Yeah, thank you. I think um, the middle school is very similar. Can you hear me? I can, but it's 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 not quite as bad as like April and um, someone else was, but it's not great. Um, try try again. All right, can you hear me better now? No. Um, so I know April, I think she, she went on her iPhone and it was better that way. And I, you can dial in. I mean, was, that, I don't want to hear from you. Now, now, yeah, you're, you're not getting anything. Grace, maybe think, try what you did before and, and like come off and go back on like you did earlier. I think go like come off and go back on like it did before. Yeah, I don't even think she's on anymore right now. Yeah, but she's coming. Yeah. Because earlier we had a meeting and she came off and came back on and she was much better. Um, sorry, did that help? Did that help? I keep going. I think so. Okay. Yes. So totally. Totally. Okay. <laughs> um, I think it's when I stay dormant. I go a little silent. Uh, I have, you know, everything that the other principals have said, um, very similar at the middle school. Um, the counselors and administration have made over 400 calls um, to families. We're just really trying to support them in the best way that we can. Um, wonderful education that's taking place, uh, Zoom meetings, um, in addition to just really fun vi videos that the teachers are posting to stay connected with students. Um, real world math activities are having to do cooking lessons and find math activities around the house, uh, writing about their experiences and what they're doing and what they wish they could be doing. Um, kids are um, really thankful for the connection that they're having, continuing to have with staff. Administration's also checking in on new meetings. So just all very similar to the other schools, we're trying to stay as positive as, as possible with the families. Um, we're really excited about um, the routines that we have in place and about keeping the positive things that we have going on. So we're doing, trying to do different things with our kids, calling home, on um, different types of awards that we've created uh, for online learning and the kids and the families seem to like that. 
I have to tell you that our families and our community have been so supportive um, of what we're doing. So right. that's about it. Oh, awesome. Um, now, now, um, Dr. Shaberhood, I didn't know if it was appropriate to ask now or if it's be later, but you know, there's lots of questions about like you know grading and GPAs and all that sort of thing. Is that now or? I think Capaldino would be happy to answer some of those questions. All right. So, so I mean, I, I saw the continuity plan, and a lot of it was covered in there. Or, you know, but not everything. But I'd like to know, yeah, what's going on with grading and class rank and GPA and all that good stuff. Sure. Right. So <clears throat> the plan is to, uh, to for the high school to close out term three uh, a week from tomorrow. Um, so you should be getting a. Uh, we're, we're waiting for uh, agenda item uh, number ten to go through tonight, and then we'll be sending a, a global connect home to uh, to parents um, probably Monday night. We'll stay away from the holidays. But um, we have let the students know that grades close a week from Friday for term three. Um, they will not be penalized um, and can only receive extra credit for work that was done um, during this time frame. Um, we, felt, we felt as a staff it's important to close out term three because there's so many things for the seniors um, that are required for us to have that, including class rank for graduation. So we're excited to get that done. And then moving forward, uh, work done between a week from Friday and the last day of school will be turned will be counted term for term four and uh, and this will be again students will only receive uh, credit for the work that they've done and they won't be penalized for work that they couldn't couldn't do uh, we do have uh, about six students that don't have access to the internet so just like other schools we're giving them hot copies and they're not being penalized um, we've had uh, a great uh, turnout, as I mentioned earlier in my presentation, uh, of students being involved in their classroom, and uh, and we don't anticipate uh, that this being a, a negative experience for any of our students uh, as long as they uh, sign in and, and and check in with their teachers. And so, like, what happens? Uh, I was reading the the grading structure, and it's like pass, fail, in, you know, incomplete. Uh, so, if people just don't, if students just don't do the work, they get incomplete. So if a student doesn't do the work, um, we have you know three quarters of the year complete. So we would we have a formula that we would use where we would take we would count term one, two, three in their midterm exam uh, towards their final grade. Um, so like I said, the kids can only really improve their grades during this time away from school, and they can't really bring them down. So okay. we felt that was the fairest way to do it. There's a lot of uh, schools that are doing things uh, differently. And uh, a lot of schools are doing something very similar to this. And we felt this was the fairest way uh, for us in regards to, to grading students. Now, there was something in the MOA we just signed about uh, only doing 30% new learning. Is that reasonable? I think it's reasonable. Um, you know, I think it's going to fluctuate based on the classes. I think we'll be a little higher uh, in uh, the advanced placement and the IB. But I think that's reasonable. And then, you know, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but we'll have to readjust curriculum for the fall of next year. And ironically, we had a conversation about that this morning in our admin meeting um, to adjust for uh, some lost instruction. We're never going to be able to replicate uh, everything that would have gone on in the classroom. So there will be some lost instruction and some remediation that will need to be made in the fall. And, and it, it, it's, you know, I've got a high school, so it's great, great that I'm hearing from you, but is there, is this a concern at the middle school too, or, or no? And I don't know, there she is. The plan that we put in place would be different than the high schools. I believe it's on that continuation of, um, continuing of learning plan. Um, we don't, do credits at the middle school, so we don't need a plan that involves credits. Um, but what we do need is um, some way to assess the standards. So MCAS would have started today for us. Um, without MCAS, 
uh, with MCAS being so soon for us, basically our standards have been taught um, in ELA and most of all the standards in math would have been taught. So we're looking at a plan that would assess certain standards, five to 10 standards within each grade within each subject that we discuss on this online um, learning time. So a little bit of a different type of plan at the middle school. All right, it was a little hard, but I think I made most of that out. <laughs> um, does anyone else have questions for anybody? Ms. Bakiaki. Uh, for Mr. Palladino, so I guess my question would just be what, do you have a fear that students, if they know that their grade can't drop, what their incentive will be? Absolutely, we, we do have that fear. Um, our kids are very savy and, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were obviously uh, they pay attention to details. So that is a concern, uh, but just you know, keep in mind we're aligning our our plan with the commissioner's recommendation. So we're not freelancing on this. Uh, these are the recommendations by uh, him, and we're just trying to align ourselves with that. But yes, it is a concern. Uh, but we have ways to work around that. We have a lot of people that have been reaching out to parents and making sure we have communication and we're as transparent as possible. To me, it's all about the learning. Um, you know, the grades can serve as motivation, but to me, um, this is an opportunity for kids to advance their grades um, and, and not be held, you know, liable for, uh, you know, for some poor grades. Everything is going to help them. So there's an opportunity for some kids to make some advancement in their GPA, and, uh, and I, I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, I'm also excited to be able to continue the learning because uh, – there's a lot of schools, like I said, are struggling to keep the learning going. And we're uh, moving forward. No, and hopefully that is just an exception that, you know, you won't have to deal with much. I hope you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, too, to all the principals for being here tonight to tell us about what's going on. You know, we've heard nothing but great things, like everyone has been saying. Um, I just wish we could. There was a way for us to tell every teacher and every every person in the district, every worker who's been working so hard, you know how much they're appreciated and recognize them for that. Um, you know, I think of the teachers who aren't just teaching their own classes, but they have their kids at home now, and you know they're either they're school age kids who they're trying to teach to, or they're toddlers who aren't in daycare, but they're still keeping up with their classrooms and. And I really, you know, so I really appreciate everything that everyone is doing. And it makes you really proud to be from Wareham, um, to hear all these great things. I've talked to a lot of other parents, a lot of other um, teachers from other districts, and they're all saying the same things about Wareham. So good job. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Uh, anyone else for anyone? So, um, so Scott, yeah, you had mentioned something. You brought up the agenda item 10. Uh, and, and you described how it would impact um, the term like, great, uh, grades and stuff. I, I, I might have missed it. Like, how, how would that, how would the vote on that impact grading either way? Well, what it would do is it would, it would give us um, a little more time for the seniors. I know your son will appreciate that um, because uh, without having that extra week, the term will be obviously a week shorter for the seniors. So I'm excited to uh, stay tuned to that vote because I think we need an extra week there. Uh, for all students. And as you've heard, we've got a tremendous amount of momentum going on right now. And uh, I want to see us keep it going. So I'm, I'd probably let the cat out of the bag on how I would have voted if I was voting on that. But uh, that's that's how it's going to impact our, our term four. But, but the funny thing is I haven't talked to a senior that is, that is a fan of that at all. <laughs> well, they, need, they need to keep in mind that we would have could potentially have to move graduation because uh, the state has a formula for the last day of school and how far away graduation can be. And that one year we had a lot of snowstorms. They gave us a hard time about that. So there, there could have been um, a situation, again, I'm not trying to get you to vote one way or another, but there could have been a situation where we may have had to add, a, add another week to uh, the seniors uh, term four either way. So um, this will uh, obviously solve that problem if it was gonna be a problem. And, and now what about, I mean, like, awards ceremonies is there any, any arrangements for that at all or 
So I met with the seniors on Monday. We had about uh, about a third of the class, which was really cool. And it was a beautiful day on Monday, as you remember. So I was pretty excited for a 2 p.m. meeting to have a third of the class uh, represented there. And uh, I told them that I would do everything in my power to make sure we have everything that we were going to do for seniors. Obviously, it may be a little later than we traditionally plan uh, for in regards to these awards, nights, and graduations. And I think um, I think that's true for all the principals too. I don't just think that's going to be a high school thing. I think you'll see once we get a, an all clear date um, that we'll have some things in play, and we're already working on that behind the scenes right now, um, mapping that out for once we get the all clear. Anyone else before we move on? All right, uh, thank you for that, everybody. So with that, we're moving on to discussion and vote, April vacation. Let it rip. <laughs> All right, well, the WEA took a poll and they voted 84% uh, to support taking April vacation back and to continue education during those days. If that would happen, that would make our last day of school June 16th, and we would be able to maintain the graduation date of June 5th. So we would rec I would recommend to the committee to please accept this proposal to um, teach during April vacation. Okay, uh, who wants to go first? Ms. Rossi. So I've heard from a lot of um, very overwhelmed parents and some overwhelmed teachers who are parents. Um, and I think that, you know, they might need the break from this new normal. I think a lot of parents that are still trying to navigate, you know, those workers that are essential without daycare and having multiple age children of multiple needs and different grades and different schools, and they're trying to help their students succeed at home. Um, I think that they're overwhelmed. And I think that um, me personally, I'd be okay going through. It doesn't affect me one way or the other. The kids in my house are kind of going on their own clip. It's, it's fine. But all, of all the people that I sort of uh, unofficially surveyed asking their thoughts um, on removing April vacation, from teachers and parents, they've all made huge, you know, outpouring of uh, that they need a break, that they need to catch their breath and try to help themselves navigate this new at home situation. Can I speak to that? Yep. All right. So, so I'm going to go, hold on, Mary. I'm going to go with uh, Ms. Chandler. Am I, can you hear me? Am I unmuted? You're fine. Okay, um, I had thought through this and I had asked a few of my parents too about this and I actually have um, parents that are afraid they're gonna be going back to work in June. And I did watch on the news today, I don't know if it was Channel 7 or something, that they're going to try to bring back essential employees more and more as the dip goes down. So my concern with that is that these families that are not working right now will be working as soon as these businesses begin opening which could be in june so it might be an opportunity four days of work um, next week maybe an opportunity these parents have we might be out of school but these parents might be going back to work sooner than we're back at school if that makes sense um, so that's just another consideration to think about and it will be four days um, because of patriots day too so we won't be in session on patriots day Okay. And uh, before before you, Mary, uh, go ahead, uh, Mr. Palladino. Hey, I was before you. During uh, April, though, that's the thing. I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> Am I good? Okay. You're good. So with the holiday, it's it's a three day week. When you when you look at the plan with Friday being a PD day, it's really only three days. Just just for clarification purposes, it's three school days the kids would be engaged for. I just wanted to make sure you had that information. Thank you. I wasn't aware. I forget that the, the holidays, I, I don't, I work most Monday holidays, so I often forget that the school vacation does tie in with the state holiday, and I was unaware of the, the PD day, so thank you. All right, Ms. Morgan. Okay, so I just wanted to get clarification on the, um, 
so Dr. Shaverhood, I believe you said that the WEA said that in the um, majority voted that they prefer that it be um, worked through the vacation. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I myself, just my own thought is I'd like to have that time off because of all the stress and everything. But I mean, if that's what their majority vote is. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting you say that, Mary, because I, you know, the, the vote, that's a pretty solid vote, 85% mm -hmm. of the union. Right. But, but I'm, I'm being contacted directly by, by some that, that, that you no, know, they need that break. It's, it's overwhelming for them too. They're, they're like, you know, yeah. full, I mean, based on the oh, conversation wow. we've been having, everybody's stepping it up. You know what I mean? They need a break, but, but um, not to interrupt, I saw Joyce, you had your hand up. Well, I was going to try to paraphrase what uh, Mr. Palladino said the other day at a high school council meeting. So I won't do that. I'll just ask you to repeat, Scott, what your thoughts were. Uh, you put me on the spot, Joyce. <laughs> um, so at the school council meeting, I, I, I said, I'm going to try and uh, reiterate it, but basically something to the effect of, if at this point in time, we knew we were going to be coming back in June and I was able to vote, I would vote for giving the students the vacation because I think the contact with the teachers will be so important in June. But the reality of the matter is we haven't even hit the pinnacle of this situation. Yeah, so if you amortize out the downward slope that they've been talking about, we're already into June at this point in time. So it's, it's in my opinion, unrealistic that we would be back. So I think you garner the momentum that we have. Mm -hmm. And it's too bad we couldn't um, speak to these people that are kind of frustrated like on Monday after a three-day weekend this weekend, and then they'd have a three-day weekend again next weekend with a holiday on Monday, I think they would see things a little bit differently. But again, that's just what I said at school council. Right. Well, thank uh, you. All right, uh, Dr. Shaverhood. Yes, I pulled up uh, the email where Deanna said they have 85% are in favor of working through April vacation and 15% are against it. Uh, the members felt like families are just getting into the routine and would rather not disrupt this momentum. One of the other considerations that we had was it would be easier for us to work with our students through April vacation and during the third week in June. Mm -hmm. When we've been through this long haul, I think many people would like to be outside and sitting with our computers at that time in June, I think would be a real struggle for some of our students. Um, so that was, that's directly from the WEA. Okay, uh, Ms. Ross. So is all of this in, in anticipation that the closure will continue past May 4th as, as declared right now? Is that it, part of this consideration that we are kind of projecting that this is going to be extended yet again? Um, I think that we would like to be back on May 5th. I'm not sure that's a real realistic um, possibility. So we're really preparing, you know, we're, be, we're preparing for a couple different scenarios. We're preparing if we come back, and we're preparing if we don't come back. We're also preparing if we are able to run some summer programming. Regardless, we do know that our teachers are, are stressed, our staff stressed, as well as our families. So that was one reason why we're looking at kind of scaling back 30 to 40% of material and looking at going to a four day week in three of the buildings and the uh, mine has a pretty good flow. So they're going to stay at the fifth day. So we've recognized that and we're starting to make some adjustments. Don't mind it. <laughs> um, so so I, I put a, you, you, probably, you guys probably saw it, a lot of you. I, I put on uh, Matters of Wareham Facebook page. I, I did a, an informal, you know, I just threw it out there what people, you know, would, um, would they prefer, you know, working through it or having the vacation? And it really was kind of all over the place. So the people, a lot of the people that wanted the break really were pretty adamant about it. But um, it's about the kids, the students. And so I uh, reached out to uh, 
Ms. Roberge and asked her, you know, um, for her thoughts. And she had actually, when I called her the other day, uh, I called her back, she had, uh, had just started a poll amongst her peers. So um, I was wondering if maybe you could you know, chime in or, or give your thoughts on what's going on here. Yeah, um, I was silently raising my hand for the past 10 minutes trying to be oh. passive. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so I took to social media to see what my peers had to say. Um, I got uh, almost 200 uh, votes and feedback, and it is in favor for working through a relocation. Um, it was 55 to 45. So that's what the students thought, and a variety of different people from all different grades voted. So it's not, I don't really see it as biased. So that's the data that I collected. Could, could you differentiate between the, the grades? They, were the seniors like really adamant that they have a break? Um, no, actually, which was surprising. It was like 50-50 for the seniors. Wow, okay. Yeah. And, um, and now, I guess, to, more so to Scott, but maybe to you too. Now, AP is still going on, right? Correct. Online and exams. Yeah. And I mean, it, obviously, it's not the same, but I mean, it, it, it is still more rigorous, right, okay. than the, the regular it's, it's tough, like firsthand. Like all we're doing is it's we're getting so specific with the test and just learning like in preparation for the test. It's like it's basically the test is like so shaved down. Like it's instead of a bunch of multiple court like multiple choice and yeah. like pre response questions. It's so they've just, adjusted they've adjusted like, the end of the course exam yeah. um to represent where the teacher should be for the first week in March in the curriculum. Right. So the Did students are not being penalized um, because of obviously the, the closure for a period of time. So yeah. it's it's a pretty fair process. And obviously they'll be doing the assessment at home online. I was gonna say, did I hear correctly? It's, it's essentially open book? To, yeah, to a point. There's actually, uh, we, we, we're uh, sending out a letter to parents. Um, actually, I think it went out today or Monday uh in regards to everything they need to know about the test all right so uh, this is this is just a weird for lack of a better word opportunity that we're in a situation that we are right now that we're considering you know not working for vacation but i know in the past when we thought about it in the bigger picture like they, like doing away with it altogether you know um way back remember when miss russo was a student rep and she and she said that basically, for, for as an AP student, that um, they, that that was like her so necessary, you know, that they needed that break in April to um, to just you know relax and, and decompress. Well, they already um, had a week off, right? They had a week off. Three weeks ago, they had a week off. That's true. Yeah, they, yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. yeah. They did. <laughs> okay. So anyway, that that's that's uh, where I was going with that. Just. Um, in the in the bigger picture um but it, yeah I, I see what you're saying but um so any anyone anyone else want to chime in or i'll oh, see none um all right so i guess we'll take a vote on uh so the vote is um oh the vote, need a vote to this to work through april vacation Is there a second? second? Okay. Any further discussion? All right, see now. Uh, I'll start, okay, uh, April? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Mary? Yes. Uh, myself, I'm gonna say no, but uh, I, re I respect it, obviously. Um, and um, th th that's the vote, it's uh, four, it's uh, three, one, zero. And um, there's your answer. So moving on, um, acceptance of gifts. Okay. Um, I would ask the committee to accept the following gifts. $200 to the stage backpack program from Leanne Stone of Marshfield. $400 from Cape Cod 5 to a teacher at Minot. $100 from Cape Cod Five to Janelle Brandywine for the, from the middle school. These are educational mini grants. A trumpet to the middle school 
for the music program from Katrina Wen and $12.03 from Custom Inc. for purchases of biking gear by a middle school teacher. We have a motion to accept the donations. Second. That was April and then Joyce. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, just uh, want to say, oh, as always, my favorite part of the agenda. This is great. Thank you very much, everybody. And with that, I um, have a, a vote, vote to accept. Um, so Joyce? Yes. Mary? Yes. April? Yes. Myself, yes. Uh, report of the superintendent. Yes. Uh, first, you had received on the... Um, newsletter the, uh, to approve the bills and payroll. They were listed, so I would ask the committee, please approve what has been listed. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. So uh, April and then Joyce. And I would just ask, usually, uh, Dr. Shiva, this add-ons, but this is just taking it as it was presented? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so with that, um, motion to um, vote to approve. Um, April? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Mary? Yes. Myself? Yes. Still on the uh, superintendent report. Yes. I just wanted to fill in a couple of gaps and make sure that we recognize some folks. First of all, you know, we've you heard the principals talk about students that did not have internet access. So believing that this could be for a longer period of time, what we've done is we have hotspots coming to us. So we will be passing out hotspots as soon as they arrive. They were supposed to have been here last Friday and then today. So we're hoping that they will be here shortly. Uh, the principals have all reached out and we know the students who are in need of the devices. And so once they do arrive, we will be making a, arrangements with the students to get them the internet access. Uh, and that will certainly help uh, students access their um, lessons. As well, I just have to tell you that, you know, we have so many unsung heroes in our, with our staff the cafeteria, the custodians, the bus drivers, the secretaries, I mean, the nurses, it's just over, it's just makes your heart um, full with all of the many wonderful things that they're doing. Our cafeteria, if you've been watching, they've been serving about 11,200 meals a week. We anticipate that that will go up as we go forward into this and funny when it's nice days we don't serve quite as many lunches as when it's rainy days so today was an all-time high with a number of uh, student breakfasts and lunches that were picked up so we're anticipating that tomorrow we'll be serving um, a, a record high for this week and it's just it's just wonderful how everybody has worked together and is making sure that our kids are getting the meals that they need to have. Our nurses have offered, and they're going to be working with a public health nurse as our numbers in Wareham start to um, elevate. They're going to be working to help track down people that have had contact, and they're going through some webinars during this weekend, and they'll be um, starting on Monday, I believe, with the public health uh, nurse. As Joan, I think, mentioned that our pairs are writing notes that are going into student lunches just to level that they're missed. And that's, you know, that means so much to, to our students. Our custodians, we're cleaning all the buildings just thoroughly. So when we're ready to reopen, we will be ready. Um, everything's cleaned. And it, it, you know, people are, are volunteering, coming in, asking what I can do, making sure that, they're, that people have what they need. So 
certainly very grateful to all the community people that have volunteered and reached out. Your help's very much appreciated. And I'm sure as we continue through this, we're going to be calling on you more and more. If you visit our website, I would urge you to do that. Um, online lessons are there. Their things are updated. We try to send out all kind, all information through that, um, and they've been doing a very nice job keeping it up to date. So, all in all, people have worked collectively. Everybody is working so hard to make the best of this to support our students and our families. So I just wanted to thank everybody and let them know how much we appreciate what they're doing. So that concludes my report, unless you have some specific questions. Yeah, and I, and I, and I appreciate it too. And, and I just, sometimes when I'm, when I'm talking with you, I just wish the rest of the committee could, could hear it too, you know, that, that how, how proud and, um, um amazed you are especially at the cafeteria workers that are just really going full tilt um and, mm -hmm. and, and everybody you know um it, it just, i just wish everybody else could hear it i hear it yeah. um anyone else okay all right um so so is that is that the end of the superintendent report yeah it does it okay so so we're on to the report of the um, school committee. Any reports? Seeing none. Okay, we're on to any other business, but this any other business is actually an agenda item because somebody just made it made me aware that we we get we have a real big problem here. <laughs> so if you go back to um, the the um, the MOU the MOA, I keep calling it an MOU because that's how we used to call them at when I was a library trustee, but you go back to the MOA and, and uh, we're going to look at, um, I guess, section 10, paragraph 10. I'll wait for you guys to get it. Uh, and I'll, I'll let you guys read it and let me, and, and tell me what you think is wrong with that. given the vote we just had on April vacation. So adjusting the dates. Yeah, I mean, is it, what do we need to do there? Anything? Remove the exception, probably. If, if people understand that, we'll just make the adjustment um, with the association because of the vote. Well, we can, well, I mean, it's our vote. We can re-vote it if, in, in, in change it if you want. If you're, if you're comfortable doing that, that's fine. I mean, whatever you, your pleasure is. Um, so, so how, how should that read appropriately? I think you would just strike out April 21st through Thursday, April 23rd, and the rest of it should stay as is. Okay. Um, and if Michelle was here, I'd ask her, what's the right way to do that? So you need to, oh, I need a motion to reconsider the vote on the MOA. And it, it needs to come from the, it needs, well, it needs to come from somebody, well, we all voted in favor of it. So, so if, is there a motion to reconsider the, the vote on the MOA? I see Joyce, go ahead. Oh, you're, you're muted. I can't hear you. If I read this, it says, with the exceptions of April 20th, and May 25th. It says Tuesday, April 21st through Thursday, April 23rd will be recognized as work days. It's right. excluding those as work days because it says originally scheduled as April vacation. It follows on to the next page. Right. So Tuesday, April 21st through Thursday, April 23rd, including Friday for Minot, originally scheduled as April vacation will be recognized as work days under the schedule set forth. 
So isn't that saying that they will be recognized as work days, not vacation? Oh, maybe. No, because it says it says with the exceptions of right before that and list those dates. No, there's a period after May 25th. I had to read it a couple of times. Tuesday, when it says Tuesday, April 21st, that's a new sentence. Oh, yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it is It is saying that, Mike, so it's already in there. So let's yeah. move. Okay. Yes. I don't I, even, I so I don't so. think we need to. All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause for a sec. I'll be right back. So, so, so given the whole professional development and everything, this is the, those days that that's a, this is worded okay. I think so. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So I guess we don't need a new vote, but I mean, certainly, if if, if it becomes an issue, we can meet quickly <laughs> and, and and do it again mm -hmm. if we needed to. So, so with that. Um, So uh, that's any 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 other business? So can I ask a question? Uh, go ahead, I Joyce. I think do we have a meeting scheduled for April twenty third? I don't have it in front of me. I'm not sure, but that does sound weird that we would do that. Yeah, I think I noticed it before, and then I forgot about it. I didn't think we did because it was originally supposed to be vacation. I thought right. it was May seventh or something like that was the next one. Where's Michelle when we need her? I know. <laughs> I, 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 usually I'm at work and I got it right there and I just pull it up. <laughs> I have it on my calendar, but I maybe I just added it. I'm, I'm trying to look it up quickly. There is one May 7th because that's the staff rec recognition night. Yeah, I think, there's, I think there is one before that, I noticed. Yeah. So I, was, I was like, oh, we have. I remember the recognition night. It's one now April 23rd. So I have be... April 23rd on my calendar. Yes. Yeah. So, so what do you want to do? I mean, normally we would just have to meet. Well, I mean, there's no April vacation now, so. Oh, yeah. So let's just meet. meet. Yeah. Right. It was like a premonition, right? Like, think yeah. of four she had away or something. <laughs> so we'll just right. meet. Yeah. Um, Any, any, anything else? No. All right. So I'll take a, uh, well, before we take a motion to adjourn, I do want to just thank everybody. And it was, it's actually, I was really looking forward to this because it's been so long. And, and, and like I said, I'm on, on the building committee. I get to see, you know, Joan and Bethany and, you know, I, I talked to Kim and Dr. Chuam all the time, but I wanted to see a lot of the other, you know, all the other principals and staff. It was good to see everybody. Uh, try to do this as normally as we possibly could. I hope it worked out good for everybody. Um, I do miss the public participation, um, but it's what it is for now anyway. Um, so and, and with, the, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, Second. So that's April, then uh, Joyce. And so roll call, we'll do Mary. Yes. April. Yes. Uh, Joyce? Yes. Myself, yes. And thank you, everybody. Thank Stay you. Safe. Happy thank Easter, you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you.